Well, welcome back to Don Riggs Hurricane. Jim here at Barry Pruitt Court for the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. Andy Manis and West Cisco ready to bring you the fourth and final game of this Friday evening. Don't forget, still got four more coming up tomorrow, but tonight, rounding out our schedule, Springdale Harbor facing off against North Little Rock. We've got the Wildcats facing the Charging Wildcats. <laughs> and the Harbor Wildcats coming in, and we saw them at Brooklyn uh, earlier this year. They lost to Marion in the semifinals, so they end up with the third place game. And uh, North Little Rock, I uh, think their, their football team's playing in this tomorrow night, or tomorrow or tomorrow night, in the 7A finals, so. Starting lineups tonight for Coach Johnny Rice and the North Little Rock Charging Wildcats. Number zero, Otis Jordan. Number one, Ray Fresh. Number four, DeCorey Watkins. Number 12, Moses Moody. And number 13, Spencer Sims. Four, Springdale Harbor underneath Coach Scott Boland. Number two, Tyler Garrett. Number five, Tyler Perry. Number 20, Jack Ragsdale. Number 22, Zach Peck. And number 33, Josh Ezel. And Ezel out at center court. Their center circle ready to jump for the opening tip alongside Moses Moody. Keep an eye out for Tyler Perry and Tyler Garrett. Those two players kind of lights out for Springdale Harbor in that tournament in Brooklyn a couple weeks ago. The charging Wildcats will win the tip, and North Little Rock has got it in the front court, working it around the horn. Skip pass in the corner, and now Jordan trying to find some space against Ragsdale. They'll spread out the offense on the other side now. Three-point corner pocket shot, no good. Tip in, will fall as Spencer Sims comes flying in out of nowhere to put a fingertip on it. North Little Rock in their home white, trimmed in gold and, and royal blue. Harbors in their road, uh, I guess you call it charcoal gray with their Carolina blue numbers. Definitely trim. Carolina blue without a doubt. Tyler Garrett on the far sideline. Now to Peck, now skip past the Ragsdale in the corner. Ragsdale's a good player. We saw at Brooklyn also. So he is. He's got all the fundamentals. He's good in there underneath the boards or underneath the backboard, fighting for those rebounds as well as the shots off the mark for Harbor. And now going the other way with North Little Rock. The size advantage is definitely in Harbor's favor, as you look at. As right there is uh, Sims dishing in another one. Yeah, and right over Josh Ezel, but Ezel can block shots as we saw at Brooklyn. Ezel is uh, like the high school equivalent of Anthony Davis. He can block those three-pointers no matter how far away he is. There's a nice bounce pass on the right side of the paint for Ray Fresh. And Fresh will score. And now it's an early 6 to nothing lead for North Little Rock over Harbor. And Coach Boland said, no, nah, we're going to go ahead and stop that right now with 6.31 left to play. Take a little 30-second timeout as you see. The nice tip in here by Sims, and he's got four quick points. Yeah, and there's the dish off and another little floater. Both of them were floaters right there in front of the basket. And now take a look at this assist here from DeCorey Watkins. Just fed it right through traffic and great hands by Ray Fresh handling the hot pass and finishing it off for his teammate as well. You always love it whenever you, you have a great, a great assist and, and your teammate can finish the basket for you. Uh, it only makes you look that much better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so six to nothing out of the timeout. Harbor's still trying to find their first points of the night. Ezel on the baseline oh. will lob it over the defender. Don't know. I think he just lost it. I think that was just a turnover. I, I'm not going to count that one as a shot yeah, un unofficially. I think he just lost it on the way up. There's a leaner. Shots no good. Peck's going to come down with the rebound, and now here's Perry bringing it up the floor. Perry with a lob for oh. Ezel, and Ezel will flush it through. Alley-oop, yes, sir. Why not the first two points of the ball game? There's a quick three-point shot by North Little Rock, and now Harbor will have a chance to bring it up the floor and try to narrow the margin a little bit with 5.45 left to play. Garrett off the hesitation. I don't know if that was a three. No, just a two inside the three-point line, but... Either way, it's now a one-point ball game just like that. That timeout, I think, from Coach Boland did his team some good, kind of settled their nerves a little bit here. Yeah, and I don't think that last three-point shot by North Little Rock was what Coach Rice wanted. That was a little rush there. Yeah, very early in that possession. Top for Jordan. Jordan nearly had it poked away. Good defense there by Perry. Almost got it again. Thought about the three. Now they'll dish it off in the corner. Three-point shot good from Ray Fresh. 
Otis Jordan, the point guard for North Little Rock, reminds me of like a Spud Webb or Muggsy Bowles. He's just a, a, a boy amongst men, but he can he can get out there and play. Perry with it now on the far sideline, looking for that screen from Peck. A high dribble, the referee's going to say it was knocked away, and now it is knocked away. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. Nice finger roll there from DeCorey Watkins. And you got to remember, a high dribble is not illegal. As long as his hand stays on top of the ball, that is not illegal. Another and turnover. Three-on-one opportunity, and there's Ragsdale with a hard foul, and uh, better to let him hit the, hit the deck than hit the shot. So Ragsdale picking up number one as you take a look. This nice little finger roll moments ago from DeCorey Watkins. And tonight's officials, Mr. Brandon Thiessey, Mr. Robert Frazier, Mr. Kevin Simmons. Spencer Sims at the free throw line. He's got four points here in the first quarter. First free throw is off of the mark. First free throw between either of these two squads. Halfway through the first quarter. And here's the foul moments ago by Ragsdale. Ragsdale got a lot of ball there, but he got a lot of body too. Yeah. So, But again, you, you don't want to let him get up a clean shot. So exactly. make him earn him the hard way. And so foul, it's, so far it's been a good foul. And Count it as a great foul because Sims misses them both and the lead stays at seven, Grant, seven to four. Grant Allen comes in to, to spell Josh Ezel for the Wildcats. There he is at the top of the key. And he's if I remember, right, and there's gonna be a, he's going to get char, uh, called for a charging foul. But if I remember right, didn't he start the games at Brooklyn? Uh, so Nick Buchanan was the other okay. starter in there for uh, – for Harbor during that Brooklyn tournament. So Grant, and we did get to see a little bit of Grant Allen in there. We got something going on here. The scores table asking the official something. Oh, he's asking what what number of the. Yeah, one of the number of the foul. Yeah. He's telling him it was number ten, and that is Grant Allen on that charge. Offensive foul, on Harbor number ten, Grant Allen. One just to get clarified, so they they. Know for sure at the book. You Got know, when I was officiating, <laughs> Andy, that's one thing that we always, when we went over to the scores table and we, you know, we, we told them, so, you know, we'll work with you to whatever. You are the weird three out here on the floor with those two, the timer and the bookkeeper. They're part of our team. So that's what we always told them. So. North Little Rock in the front court. There's a nice dish off. They work it around the horn for a three-point shot, and they'll find the bottom of the net. Spencer Sims having himself quite the first quarter. That was actually Moses oh, Moody, Moses number Moody. 12. Beg your pardon. 13-12 is only one off there, but Moses Moody kicking in his first points of the night. There's definitely a size advantage with Rags, Ragdale if he go inside. Ooh, shot from Peck. At the free throw line is off the mark. Perry gets the rebound and has it knocked out of his hands. Now they're trying to double team him, and I think they're going to pick up Grant Allen with his second foul, and it will indeed be number two on the bench player for Harbor. See, Peck with a great wide open look, just couldn't get the friendly roll on it. Those are the kind of shots you, you keep shooting, and they will eventually fall, but... Again, Grant Allen called for his second foul, and Parker Weiser is coming into the game for him. Still the same starting five out on the floor for North Little Rock. To Corey Watkins with it. Oh, Ragsdale, it just got, Ragsdale just got away with the push. And Weiser comes down with the missed shot for Harbor. Gets it over to Garrett. Garrett with a spin move, leaves it for Ragsdale, steps into a three-pointer. Off the mark. 10-point ball game here. Peck, I believe, is going to get charged for a push right underneath the basket there. Check out the replay as Makai Washington taking it strong to the rack, and now he'll go to the free throw line. So Makai Washington will drop in his first free throw there, makes it a 11-point ball game here with 249. This is kind of similar to that Brooklyn tournament. If you remember, I think I remember Harbor starting off pretty slow in one of their games and ended up having quite a second quarter. Yeah, and that was against Marion in, you know, in their semifinal match with Marion. They ended up dropping that one, I believe, by one or two points. 
but they did start slow and then had a great comeback. Deep three-point shot from Garrett will find the bottom of the basket. Five points here in the quarter for him might be just the boost that they need, and that's two of the players that gave Harbor the boost in that game, Tyler Garrett and Tyler Perry. Along with some nice blocks by Josh Ezel. Left elbow now, three-point shot, off the mark, fighting for the rebound, put back is no good, and a whistle is blown. We'll see if it's they're going to get him be. in the act of shooting. Tyler Perry picks up the foul. Just the first one on him. That'll be the fifth team foul, though, on Harbor here in the first half with still 2.07 left to play in the first quarter. Moses Moody at the free throw line. He's got three points. He'll stay there for the time being as he misses that first free throw. Otis Jordan checking back into the game. And there's that replay on the foul moments ago on Tyler Perry. He make, Moses Moody makes the second one. So four points here in the quarter for Moody. Makes it 16 to seven with under two left to play in the first. Weiser with it on the left elbow is gonna drive, spins, gets it to Ragsdale. Peck's gonna come set a screen. Perry with the space, knocks down a three pointer. Back to back triples for Harbor. And that could be what they need to find the spark here in the first quarter. Now only trailing by six. Jordan with it at the top of the key. We'll leave it on the left elbow now. And they'll run motion. Actually, they'll take a shot from just inside the three-point line. Peck's going to come down with the rebound. Now a minute 20 left to play in the first for the Wildcats of Harbor. Garrett off the jab step. Now he's left wide alone at the top of the key. Rebound is going to go to North Little Rock. Here come the charging Wildcats. Jordan with it. Dribbling through defenders. Scoop shot, no good. Rebound goes to Garrett, and they're going to get him with a travel. Coach Boland thinks he bumped him off of his spot a little bit, and there should have been a push foul, but referee's going to say he took two steps. Corey Watkins checking back into the game. That's called working the official. Justin Thrower checking into the game as well for the charging Wildcats. He's taking it out right now for the white, gold, and blue. Missed shot from just at the free throw line off the mark, and now Harbor with a wide open look at another triple. Garrett off the mark. Jordan goes up to get the rebound. Now 37 seconds left here in the quarter. He looks at Coach Rice, gets instruction, and now he's going to go. Perry trying to stay on him. Garrett nearly came up with a turnover, he and does. he does. Yeah, they're going to say it was last touch right in front of the Harbor bench by one of the charging Wildcats. So Garrett to inbound at 24 seconds remaining. So Harbor could hold for that last shot here of the first quarter if they want to. I think that might be what they're going to do here with 15 seconds left. Over to Weiser. Weiser now to Peck with 10 seconds left. Perry at the elbow gets it to Garrett. Garrett working that jab step, spins into traffic, dishes it off to Weiser. Weiser goes up strong and will drop it in to end the first quarter. That's a pretty good end to the first quarter for Coach Scott Boland and the Wildcats considering they were down by as many as 11. Thanks to a couple of triples from both Tyler Garrett and Tyler Perry. Not to mention a pretty nice alley-oop there from Josh Ezel as well. We are headed to the second quarter, just a four-point ball game. 16 to 12 is your score. North Little Rock leading Harbor. Kick off the holiday season on Tube Town. Hubbard and Hope Furniture present live coverage of the 2017 Greater Blytheville Area Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade. Tune in December 7th at 6.30 p.m. and watch the parade live on Tube Town Channel 21 or on the Tube Town Facebook page. Don't miss the exclusive coverage of the 2017 Greater Blytheville Area Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade presented by Hubbard and Hope Furniture and sponsored in part by these local businesses. 
Andy Manis and West Cisco back here with you at Don Riggs Hurricane Gym, Barry Pruitt Court for the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. North Little Rock at Harbor in the second quarter. 16 to 12 is your score. Harbor trailed by as many as 11 there in that first quarter. But again, a couple of three-pointers from Tyler Perry and Tyler Garrett. Kind of got the ball rolling for co Coach Scott Bowen. Garrett, Perry, Ragsdale, Weiser, and Peck out on the floor for Coach Bolin and the Harbor Wildcats. There's a shot by Peck just inside the three-point line, and he'll knock that one down. Beautiful shot there from Zach Peck. And again, saw that great jump shot for, from him earlier, and it just didn't fall. Again, you continue to shoot them like that, and they will. That's a two-point ball game. That was a great shot. I mean, he's, he's got a pretty pure shot also if you look. Jordan gets it into Justin Thrower, who's into the game. Over to Moses Moody at the top of the key. Now a feed down to Justin Thrower. He's going to direct a little traffic, work back towards the top of the key for Moody. Moody leans against the defender, trying to get a whistle. Doesn't get one. Peck coming down with a rebound. Not a good job at all by Moody there on that drive. Like you say, he's trying to draw a whistle, but he's the one that made all the contact. Weiser in the corner for three. Can't knock it down. Ragsdale avoiding the push from behind there. Here's Jordan stepping up to the right elbow. Three-point line. He'll drop it down and a whistle blown as well. Looked like it was away from the it's ball. It's away from the ball. But they're gonna call, they're gonna count the three-pointer, it looks like. They're gonna count the three-pointer and they're gonna get Makai Washington from North Little Rock on a foul. After the basket. So the basket does count. And Grant Allen getting ready to check back into the game. He's going to check in for Jack Ragsdale. Had some clarification here at the scorer's table for the referee, just trying to make sure they got the foul called on the right play. I think also Coach Rice from... Uh, North Little Rock was also questioning how it was on his team. But when you push in the back with two hands on the offside, you're still going to get it. Trying to set a screen here for Allen. It looked like to be open on that right elbow. You see Allen standing up there all alone. Weiser's going to drive, and he'll go to the free throw line. Fouled on the layup attempt. DeCorey Watkins kind of had his... Had his arms outstretched in disbelief as Makai Washington picks up his second foul and picked both of those up pretty quickly. Yeah, bam, bam. Coach Boland's using this free throw opportunity. It's a uh, mini timeout trying to coach his team a little bit as Parker Weiser drops in that first free throw. And there's the drive by Weiser you see on the replay, and then there's the foul by Washington. Second one off the mark, can't hit that one. And now we'll go the other way. And Harbor's still in, still in the game. It's, it's still within arm's reach here for them. Only down four. This one could go down to the wire just like we'd had with west side and south side earlier. Allen guarding his man and now working around in the corner. Spencer Sims spins off the defender, kicks it back out beyond the perimeter. North Little Rock showing a lot of patience here. They're working it around, trying to find an open shot. Not a good shot attempt. Defender right in his face, and Peck's going to come up with the, with the air ball there. And that was a great defensive stance by Harbor Wildcats right there. Perry on the right elbow, leaves it with Peck. Peck now for Garrett. Looking for that screen there from Peck. Peck's, oh, Peck had a wide open lane to the basket and didn't drive. There's a three-point attempt off the mark. Peck comes down with the board. Trying to feed it to a wide open Perry in the corner, but now it's North Little Rock basketball, and they'll slam it home. Moses Moody. Moses Moody 
with six points here in the ball game. Quickly into the front court, there's Harbor with a quick shot, and they'll go to the free throw line as well. Tyler Garrett wasting no time moving that one up the floor, but you can see the frustration. He wanted the and one, or you know, wanted the yeah. and one opportunity. Yeah, he sure did. As you see the the jam here by Moody, and we got a timeout, a 30 second timeout by the Charging Wildcats. So at 4:49, we will keep it right here for that. Just a six point ball game between these two schools from the central of the state and from the west side of the state, 21-15. We're from the 7A Central and 7A West conferences. And looks like uh, Ezel's going to check back in for Zach Peck coming out of the timeout. Only a uh, six-point ball game here. And Garrett's going to go to the line to shoot two. And with 4.49 left to play in the second, it doesn't really feel like these two teams are done feeling each other out yet either. I don't feel like we've really gotten to much of a rhythm of the game yet. Not yet. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that, Andy. Garrett hits his first free throw. Six points on the night for him. It makes it a five-point ball game. Off the mark on the second. Sims with it on the left elbow. Working against Ezel. Now into Moody. Now in the corner. Baseline drive. Kick back out to the left elbow. Three-point shot dropped in from Spencer Sims. Ezel was just a... Step slow getting out there to contest that shot. There's Parker Weiser. Has his shot blocked, feed it ahead. And an easy layup for DeCorey Watkins, who's now got four, excuse me, in the ball game and a full timeout called on the floor. I believe Coach Bye. Bowen wanted to talk some things over. So 26 to 16 is your score, now a 10 point lead for North Little Rock over Harbor. We're gonna take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have some more second quarter action for you right after this. Introducing Ritter Home Security. Ritter takes care of protecting what's most important to you from threats like unwelcome visitors and fire to making your life easier by putting the control of your home at your fingertips. Use the free app to shut the garage, lock the door, turn off lights, arm the system and more. You can even turn back the thermostat to help save money on your energy bill. Plus, get a snapshot when your kids get home. It's smart, beautiful, convenient, and ready for your busy life. Ritter Home Security. Andy Manis and West Cisco back here with you in our fourth and final game of this Friday evening. Still four more to come tomorrow in the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. But tonight, Springdale Harbor and North Little Rock Going at it here, second quarter action, and it's a 10-point ball game. North Little Rock, 26, Harbor 16. 4-10 left to play here in the second quarter, and after the timeout, it will be Wildcat basketball. Ragsdale, Garrett, Perry, Allen, and Ezel out on the floor for Coach Bolin and the Harbor Wildcats. Ragsdale with it on the left elbow. Trying to set up a screen, and it's going to be a turnover. DeCorey Watkins leaning against Ragsdale, and Ragsdale is going to pick up the blocking foul. Second on Jack Ragsdale. Out on the floor for North Little Rock. It's Ray Fresh, DeCorey Watkins, Otis Jordan, Moses Moody, and Spencer Sims. First free throw up. And good there from DeCorey Watkins. Now, five points in the game for him as you take a look at the foul moments ago. Jack Ragsdale just moving his feet there. Second one also good from DeCorey Watkins, and now he's up to six points in the ball game. And just like that, the 12 point charging Wildcat lead. Nearly another turnover, but Garrett goes up to get it. Now he'll drive up and under. Shot is good. And, okay. Somebody they're, lost a shoe. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and count it, and then we're going to have a 
Take another look at this drive here from Garrett. Just had the lane and knew that he had it. Great drive. And is that Otis Jordan that lost his boot there? There's some nice shoes that North Little Rocks is wearing. Yeah. Very nice. Zach Peck comes back in the game for Harbor Wildcats. Watkins will give it up to Jordan across the timeline. Shot in the corner, three-pointer, good. And I believe that was Spencer, no, excuse me, Moses Moody dropping in his second triple of the game. Nine points now on the evening for Moody. Feet ahead to Perry, goes out of bounds. And right now, Harbor, after that timeout by Coach Rice, Harbor is frustrated. They're just getting no nothing on the offensive end whatsoever. And outscored 15 to 6 here in the second quarter with still 250 left to play. And North Little Rock looks content to just run out some clock here. Got a huge lead headed towards the halftime break. Jordan just steps into a deep three-point shot. Off the mark, offensive rebound though. Shot from just inside the three-point line, no good, and it'll hit the top of the backboard, and it'll now go the other way with the Harbor Wildcats. To DeCorey Watkins trying to take advantage of just a little bit of space there. Garrett to Perry, trying to split this full court trap defense. And another turnover for North Little Rock. Sims down low for Moody. Moody oh, fouled oh, that, hard by Ragsdale. That one could be. That one could be intentional. I don't know if he's going to call it or not, but that looked like more like a clothesline. So I'm looking to see if he's going to. Ragsdale came flying no, in there. No, they're not going to call it intentional. Speed. But that is Ragsdale's third. Yeah, Spencer Sims had it on the left, dished it off down low, and then a cross the lane pass to Moody. Take another look at the replay here. There's. Sims with it, dishes it off to Ray Fresh. Fresh yeah, with a nice right speed here. down low and right there across the face. That's I'm not saying that wasn't that was intentional, but it could have been called that way because of how it went across his face. Moody misses both of them at the free throw line. Now here's Perry on the drive and a charge. And Harbor's kind of spiraling right now. Perry picks up his second. There's the drive, leans into, into the defender. As you see on the replay, the defender had both feet firmly planted. 4.29 left to go at the Cotton Patch, and the Colts of Rivercrest just took an 18-13 lead All right. over the Owls of McGee. Rivercrest trying to get another state championship in football here for Northeast Arkansas. There's Moody over to Sims. Nice move by Spencer Sims. He's three for three from the floor. Actually four for four if you count the three-point attempts also. He's four for four. Here's Garrett trying to split the defense. Spins up and under and Garrett with some fancy footwork. Finds the finish at the rim. And he's in double digits now, Andy. Got 10 points. On the afternoon with 1.14 left to play. Nice dish off to Jordan. Jordan with a hot feed down low and a great score on the right side by DeCorey Watkins. That was a great look by Jordan to give it to Watkins for the for the reverse layup. North Little Rock has been impressive with their passes here That was tonight. a flop right there. He's won the charge. There's no way. Garrett at the top of the key. Finds Pet. Pet with Got another it. beautiful jumper. This is great form from Zach Peck. Makes it a 14-point ball game. They're going to need more than a handful of those to get back in this ball game. They're going to need some stops. Pick and roll, but Jordan takes it himself. Ezel comes up with the board. Peck pushing it ahead one on two, and a foul will be called on DeCorey Watkins, number one on him. Just the first one on Watkins, the fourth team foul on North Little Rock here with 22 seconds remaining. Perry with it, 
Over to Garrett on the far sideline. Peck's trying to come set a screen, and he does. That's... Lost the ball out of bounds, and Garrett wanted it to stay here with the Wildcats, but instead it's going to the charging Wildcats. 13 seconds left to play in the quarter. Across the timeline, seven seconds left. Feet up top. Three-pointer, no good. One second left. Long shot off the mark. And we're through two quarters. Here in the last game of this Friday evening of the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. 36 to 22 is your score. North Little Rock coming out in that second quarter, extending on that four-point lead they had at the end of the first. And now they are up 14. We'll take a quick break. We're back with some halftime stats for you from the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic right after this. With so many great mega services available from Ritter Communications, it's hard to pick just one. Save a bundle with bundled services. Talk as much as you want, when you want, with unlimited long distance. Get the speed you need with up to 15, 30, 50, and even 100 megabits per second internet. Enjoy online bill pay and protect all your online data and devices with Tech Home and Guardware. With so many choices, options, and savings from Ritter, all you can say is, wow! Mega services, mega savings, that's Mega Ritter. Come out and see the largest lighting display in the Mid-South at Lights of the Delta. Over 6 million lights and 48 major motion displays span a 40-acre drive through site. Lights of the Delta is open Sunday through Thursday from 5.30 until 9 p.m. and 5.30 until 10 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays through December 27th. For more information, visit our website, lightsofthedelta.com. Don't miss Lights of the Delta through December 27th. Introducing Ritter's new whole home DVR solution, the better way to watch TV. Record up to six of your favorite programs at the same time. And watch them in up to five different rooms throughout your home. Manage your recordings, set parental controls and more from your smartphone or tablet from the free Follow Me TV app. The best part, equipment starts at only $25 per month when added to an existing TV package. We just revolutionized the way you watch TV. Ritter Communications, right by you. The holidays are about staying in touch with family, friends, the holiday spirit. Ritter Communications keeps you in touch with fast, reliable internet to power holiday fun on all your family's devices. Connect with newly launched speeds up to 100 meg, backed by friendly local service. This holiday season, stay in touch with a broadband upgrade from Ritter Communications. Always right by you. Until you've seen how fast it really is, some people's reaction to Ritter's 100 megabit internet might be like, 100 mega, huh? Here's how we describe it. Mega beautiful, mega fast, mega blast, mega party, mega Ritter. There's no end to your online possibilities with up to 100 meg internet speeds. In a word, that means mega fun. If you're not getting your high-speed internet from Ritter, you should. Call 888-336-4466 today. Only from Ritter Communications, right by you. For your smartphones, tablets, phablets. For the browsers you carry in your trousers. Wowzers! For your big screens and small screens, short screens and tall screens, get speed that screams. From the top of your desk to the palm of your hand, it's the fastest internet speed in the land. There's no end to your online possibilities with up to 100 meg internet speeds. If you're not getting your internet from Ritter, you should. Call 888-336-4466 today. Ritter Communications, right by you. Kick off the holiday season on Tube Town. Hubbard & Hope Furniture present live coverage of the 2017 Greater Blytheville Area Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade. Tune in December 7th at 6.30 p.m. and watch the parade live on Tube Town Channel 21 or on the Tube Town Facebook page. Don't miss the exclusive coverage of the 2017 Greater Blytheville Area Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade presented by Hubbard & Hope Furniture and sponsored in part by these local businesses. With so many great mega services available from Ritter Communications, it's hard to pick just one. Save a bundle with bundled services. Talk as much as you want, when you want, with unlimited long distance. 
Get the speed you need with up to 15, 30, 50, and even 100 megabits per second internet. Enjoy online bill pay and protect all your online data and devices with Tech Home and Guardware. With so many choices, options, and savings from Ritter, all you can say is, wow! Mega services, mega savings. That's Mega Ritter. Come out and see the largest lighting display in the Mid-South at Lights of the Delta. Over 6 million lights and 48 major motion displays span a 40-acre drive through site. Lights of the Delta is open Sunday through Thursday from 5.30 until 9 p.m. and 5.30 until 10 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays through December 27th. For more information, visit our website, lightsofthedelta.com. Don't miss Lights of the Delta through December 27th. Welcome back to the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic here at John Riggs Hurricane. Jim, Andy, Madison, West Cisco here with you. Where it's halftime between Springdale Harbor and North Little Rock. The charging Wildcats of North Little Rock on top of the Wildcats of Harbor. 36 to 22 after the first two quarters. Close one after the first one, West, 16 to 12. But since then, Coach Rice uh, kind of turned it on. Well, 20 points in the second quarter compared to Harbor's 10. And you look right there, 12 turnovers by the Harbor Wildcats in that first half. You're not going to win very many games if you're if you're turning the ball over 12 times in a half, Andy. And uh, the field goal, 50% uh, for Harbor, 48 for North Little Rock. Free throws are both at 50%, but the fouls and the turnovers are the stats of the game right now. Looking at the leading scores for both squads, Tyler Garrett leading the way for the Harbor Wildcats. Ten points for him so far in the evening. Tyler Perry kind of held quiet so far through the first two quarters. Only three for him behind the three-point line. Uh, four points for Zach Peck. Two points for Josh Ezel. Three points for Parker Weiser. Looking at the North Little Rock charging Wildcats side of the stat sheet. Led by Moses Moody. He's got ten points. Spencer Sims has got nine. DeCorey Watkins with eight. Ray Fresh with five, Otis Jordan with three, and Micaiah Washington chipping in one from the charity stripe. That does make up the 36 points for Coach Rice and the charging Wildcats. Thoughts about the upcoming second half? Uh, the, the Harbor's going to have to come out and play a little stronger on defensive end and look for some good shots. North Little Rock has just got to keep keep going. And, yeah, you gotta you got to get turnovers if you're Harbor and not commit turnovers. Uh, if you're Harbor also. And uh, I just want to say one thing, Andy, before we get out here for, uh, for halftime. My wife sent me a text. My little girls are watching at home. Hello, Emma, Abby, Lexi. Daddy loves you. Shout out to you. All right. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and end our halftime show. We're going to take a few quick minutes to ready ourselves for this third and fourth quarter of action again. The final game tonight in our coverage of the Barry Pruitt Classic. But don't forget, four games coming up tomorrow. We'll be covering all of them starting at noon. So make sure you stay tuned here to Tube Town Channel 1 and our Facebook page as well. Shout out to all you guys that are watching on our Facebook Live right now. Still about two and a half minutes left in our halftime break, so we will step aside and come back with that third quarter for you right after this. The holidays are about staying in touch with family, friends, the holiday spirit. Ritter Communications keeps you in touch with fast, reliable internet to power holiday fun on all your family's devices. Connect with newly launched speeds up to 100 meg, backed by friendly local service. This holiday season, stay in touch with a broadband upgrade from Ritter Communications. Always right by you. Until you've seen how fast it really is, some people's reaction to Ritter's 100 megabit internet might be like, 100 mega, huh? Here's how we describe it. Mega beautiful, mega fast, mega blast, mega party, mega Ritter. There's no end to your online possibilities with up to 100 meg internet speeds. In a word, that means mega fun. If you're not getting your high-speed internet from Ritter, you should. Call 888-336-4466 today. Only from Ritter Communications, right by you. 
For your smartphones, tablets, phablets. For the browsers you carry in your trousers. Wowzers. For your big screens and small screens, short screens and tall screens. Get speed that screams. From the top of your desk to the palm of your hand. It's the fastest internet speed in the land. There's no end to your online possibilities with up to 100 meg internet speeds. If you're not getting your internet from Ritter, you should. Call 888-336-4466 today. Ritter Communications. Right by you. Kick off the holiday season on Tube Town. Hubbard and Hope Furniture present live coverage of the 2017 Greater Blytheville Area Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade. Tune in December 7th at 6.30 p.m. and watch the parade live on Tube Town Channel 21 or on the Tube Town Facebook page. Don't miss the exclusive coverage of the 2017 Greater Blytheville Area Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade presented by Hubbard and Hope Furniture and sponsored in part by these local businesses. Welcome back to the 33rd annual Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. And I just got a final, sco uh, final score and an update for you. Update, first of all, Osceola and Junction City in the fourth quarter tied at 38. And the Rivercrest Colts are going to the state championship as they defeated the McGee Owls at the final game at the Cotton Patch, 18-13. Congratulations to the Colts. Got a boy, Rivercrest, putting in work. Again, trying to bring home another state championship in football. That'll be, that'll be what, number four in this decade? I don't, I really, honestly, I, I've lost count. I, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to start, we're going to have to add another hand so we have some <laughs> more digits to count on. And in the state championship, 6A state championship game, the game is all over. Greenwood defeats Pine Bluff, 52-14. to 14. Mm. Rough night for the Zebras all the way around. All the way around, yeah. Rough night for them indeed. So getting ready to start the th third quarter here between North Little Rock and Springdale Harbor. North Little Rock will start the third quarter with possession. They'll start out with Otis Jordan, Ray Fresh, alongside DeCorey Watkins, Spencer Sims, and Moses Moody all out on the floor. For the Harbor Wildcats, it's Tyler Perry, Tyler Garrett, Zach Peck, Jack Ragsdale, and Parker Weiser. Jordan on the right elbow will work it over to the far sideline and working off a screen is Ray Fresh. Tried to dish it off in the corner. He'll hold on to it. Now here's Moody from the left elbow. Wide open is Ray Fresh. Yes, sir, in the corner. His second triple of the night, eight points now for him in the ballgame. And they opened up just like they did in the first half with the triple. Peck nearly had it stolen away, chases it down. Over to Garrett. Oh, Ragsdale was wide open down there in the paint. Missed opportunity there for the Harbor Wildcats. I tell you, North Little Rock is smaller than Harbor, but as Garrett gets that jumper to go in. But they're a scrappy team, Andy. I mean, they're going to get right in your face. They're quick. And they have tested the Harbor Wildcats here. Working to the left is Watkins. He feeds it off down low. Shot is blocked by Peck. And now a turnover right underneath the Harbor basket. Excuse me, right underneath the North Little Rock basket, rather. Harbor ball. Ragsdale into the front court. Leaves it with Perry. Perry drives. He'll go to the free throw line. Missed the shot. Spencer Sims going to get a blocking foul on that one. Number one for him. Just the first team foul here on either team. In the opening minutes of the third quarter. First free throw is good. This his first attempts tonight, Andy. It is. Again, Tyler Perry, you know, we saw him score, what was it, 30-some points against uh, one of the teams in that Brooklyn tournament and held in check here tonight. That's just his fourth and fifth points of the ball game, hitting both of those free throws there. Top of the key for Moody, and Moody just – Pulls up a little heat check, and he drops it in. That's his third three-pointer of the night. Right at the top of the key, like you said. That was sweet shot there by Moody. Saw that he had the space to make the shot and just pulled up and shot it in the defender's eye. Spencer Sims is going to get a reaching foul, his second. Two quick ones there on Sims to start the third quarter. 
And Coach Rice definitely doesn't want to see him in foul trouble. He's their leading scorer. He's got 13 points in the ball game. Perry with it, guarded by Watkins. Yeah, and, and I saw that one yep, coming. Little shoulder push there from Perry, and a great job selling it there by DeCorey <laughs> Watkins. But yeah, let's let's look right here. That, he just that elbow just came right back, and it, you know, like you said, he did he did act on it a little bit. Oh, there's a Wiser got away with one there. Yeah, he did, and there's a travel as two of the charging Wildcats fighting for possession with each other. It was uh, Moody, or excuse me, that was Sims and Fresh trying to battle for that loose ball, but you are right. Weiser kind of got away with a uh, with a hacking foul there. Here's Perry on the drive, baseline. Goes around the defender, just got it into Ragsdale. Off of Ragsdale's leg, good call. and Peck will charge towards the basket, and uh, poor choice of words by me because there was no charging <laughs> foul. As you mentioned, it was a blocking foul. Watkins, and he, he flopped on that one, and the official said, no, I got you, son. So Watkins with his second personal foul, third team foul on North Little Rock here to start the third quarter. Wiser. Yeah, and he slapped down Ooh. that time by Watkins to pick up his third foul. Two quick ones on Watkins now. He had two quick ones on Sims to start the quarter, and now here in the last minute, here in the last 30 seconds, you've had two quick ones on DeCorey Watkins. Yeah, that does put Weiser at the free throw line. It's, they say he was in the motion of shooting. Parker Weiser at the line for Harvard. So Weiser one for three, one Ooh. for four, and you can't get anywhere if you don't hit your free throws. And if I'm not mistaken, is that something – I think that's something that we saw Harbor struggle with yes. in that Brooklyn tournament. I have to go back and check my notes on North Little Rock's end of the floor. A foul as DeCorey Watkins will now head to the free throw line. Lead, those in that's going to be on Jack Ragsdale, and that's going to be his fourth. And that's going to make Grant Allen have to come off the bench. Watkins misses his first free throw. You got to hit free throws, gentlemen. He's, Watkins hits his second one. He's three for four for the night. And he's got nine points for the charging Wildcats. Here's Garrett on the drive trying to find some space around Ray Fresh. Now he's got an open lane to the basket. He'll finish with a left hand. Nice shot there by Tyler Garrett on the layup. Tyler Garrett from, from the two-point range, and he's five for five. Nice three-point basket by Moses Moody. And you can tell when it leaves his hands, Wes, as he hits his fourth one of the night that it's going in. You knew immediately as soon as it left his fingertips. Beautiful shot there by Moses Moody extends the lead. Almost a 20-point ball game here between North Little Rock and Harbor. Turnover. Turn <laughs> Little alley oop there off the backboard for Moses Malone. The Corey Watkins credited with the assist there. Eight points here in the quarter for Moody, and there's a shot good from behind the three point line from Tyler Perry. And he, he was trying to go the official to get him a foul call, and there's going to be a turnover by the charging Wildcats. And Jack Ragsdale's coming back in. We'll take another look at that alley-oop. Great job by Watkins. He knew he had the trailing teammate and put it off the glass for him. Don't get to see that happen too often here on Tube Town, so we're always a little bit excited about it. You find the, you find the small things in life to be happy about. Exactly. Grant Allen into the game for Harbor once again. Here's Garrett. Nearly trapped in the corner, but now he's left alone on the right elbow to drive. Here's Ragsdale from the left elbow. Skip pass to Peck. Peck runs right into the defender, and a charge called on Peck. Is a good job there by Spencer Sims. Apparently had his feet set. 
Let's take another look at the replay here. Good feed by Ragsdale and oof, a little tough call there. Just, Not really in. Uh, well, no, we weren't really in good position say, to we're, see it. For where that, where he's at, it may be something else. Coach Bowling didn't like it, but yeah, we didn't. We didn't have a too too good of a look at that. But you know, Coach Bowling didn't like it. But right now, he's he's just more frustrated the way his team's playing than yeah, anything. Yeah, trailing by 17, trying to get back in this one, and they're going to call a jump ball. And it's going Harbor way. Yeah, Garrett came down with that, and one of the. Charging Wildcats reached in there to tie it up. Possession arrow does keep it here, though, with Springdale. Springdale Harbor brings it up the floor now. Trailing by 17, 320 left to play in the third. Ragsdale for Allen. Now for Peck. Peck with that beautiful jumper right at the free throw line. And he just doesn't miss those. No, and, and, and like I said earlier, that is a pure jump shot, too. He's got a sweet stroke. Sims working against Ragsdale will now give it up over there on the far sideline to Jordan. Jordan's going to drive. Nice feed off down low. Another nice feed off down low. Jordan can't finish off the high glass. Push put back is no good, and we're going to get a push from behind, I believe, on Harbor. Take a look at the assist factor here. There's one. There's two. Two great passes back to back. Here's the foul right there on Peck. Peck. Every time I think of Peck, I think of uh, 18. <laughs> Face man. I'm showing my age, aren't I? Moody will hit, no, no comment. Moody will hit the uh, front end of that free throw attempt. Nine points now in the quarter for Moses Moody. 19 for the ball game. Give him 20 now as he drops in the second one as well. But, again, I just want to go back to those awesome passes, man. Just wrapped his arm right around the defender oh, yeah. to dish it off. And Kylon McCullough. Checks in for the Charging Wildcats. There's a foul on the Charging Wildcats. I think they might get Otis Jordan with that. He, uh, it's going to be on Ray Fresh. Ray Fresh. His first. Garrett's second trip to the free throw line here. Five points now in the quarter for him. Give him. 15 for the ball game. DeCorey Watkins checking back in for the charging Wildcats. Ray Fresh heading over to the bench. Second shot good from Tyler Garrett. Six points now in the quarter for him. 16 in the ball game. Just trying to get back to a sing around a single digit deficit. 227 left to play. Dish off in the corner, three-point shot, good. Justin Thrower with his first bucket of the ball game, and it comes from downtown. And and North Little Rocks, just, if you look at, it, they look like they're playing in slow motion, but they're not. They're quick, but just they're deceptively quick. And we're gonna have a an offensive foul. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a five-second violation. So we had a turnover by the by the Wildcats on a five-second closely guarded count. And now Jordan brings it across the timeline. Quick pass to DeCorey Watkins, avoids the defender. Back to Jordan. Jordan shaking Ragsdale. Back to DeCorey Watkins, steps into a three-pointer, had all day to time it up. DeCorey Watkins now with four points in the quarter. Give him 11, excuse me, 12 for the ball game. And just like that, it's back up to 21-point lead, Andy. Step back three-pointer, off the mark. Three on two opportunity. Little bump at the basket and Kylon McCullough will head to the free throw line. Zach Peck just picked up his fourth foul. 22, Zach Peck, his fourth. Haven't seen a whole lot of Josh Ezel tonight. Just been in the game a couple of times. And he's getting ready to check back in now for Zach Peck. Tyler Perry checking in for Tyler Garrett. So it's Tyler Perry, Parker Weiser, Jack Ragsdale, Grant Allen, and Josh Ezel out on the floor for Coach Boland and the Wildcats. Colin got his second one. He's in the scoring column now. So he missed his first one, dropped in the second. 
Ragsdale with it. He's still jumping up and down down there on the bottom block saying, guys, I'm wide open down here. Look at me. I'm six foot nine. Sets a screen. Now he'll roll. Trying to find the ball from Perry. Perry with a leaner and a lob. Ezel trying to oop it in. Missed his first attempt, but uh, he's only got to stand on his tippy toes. To he, he missed his first two attempts and got it on the third. Nice move on the baseline there by Moses Moody, just dragging his foot. And here we go. Oh, nice tip there by Moody because Ezel was streaking down to to hopefully slam one down for the Wildcats. Pretty close to having turbo clock here in the third quarter as we head to the fourth. 40 seconds remaining. Now we still got another 10 points before we can do that. Missed three-pointer. Oh. And there's a foul on Ezel is now, Kyle on McCullough. Now the question is, are they going to call it on the floor? Or are they going to call it in the act of shooting? It'll be in the act of shooting. First one on Ezel. McCullough's second trip to the free throw line. Off the front of the iron. He's got to put a little bit more arch on those free throws. I often see a lot of high school students shoot flat free throws. Missed them both. Here's Tyler Perry off the screen from Ezel. Ezel fell on top of him, is trying to get it down low. Now intercepted pass for Ragsdale. Ragsdale dishes it off to Perry. 10 seconds left. Ahead to Allen. Allen will drive. Bounce pass to Weiser. Weiser with a head yeah. fake, and he'll get called for traveling. <laughs> he was, the defender in the air. But yeah, he, he had the right move, but then he kind of shuffle stepped on. He didn't mean to, but just his momentum made the shuffle step. So Otis Jordan's got five seconds left here for the North Little Rock Charging Wildcats, down to two. And the ball goes out of bounds with just about one second left. They're going to say half a second left on the clock. And they're going to say North Little Rock ball. Just enough time for a tip in here. See if they can get one off. There's a quick shot. No good, and we're headed to the fourth. North Little Rock kind of running away with things here against Springdale Harbor. Headed to the fourth quarter, the score 59 to 37. The charging Wildcats lead the Wildcats. We're back with fourth quarter action right after this here on 210. The holidays are about staying in touch with family, friends, the holiday spirit. Ritter Communications keeps you in touch with fast, reliable internet to power holiday fun on all your family's devices. Connect with newly launched speeds up to 100 meg, backed by friendly local service. This holiday season, stay in touch with a broadband upgrade from Ritter Communications. Always right by you. Welcome back to the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. Andy Manis and West Cisco starting the fourth quarter with you here between North Little Rock and Springdale Harbor. And this has been all North Little Rock since we ended the first quarter. Yeah, it's just been nothing but charging Wildcats. And I've got a final in, in basketball in Northeast Arkansas. The Brooklyn Bearcats defeat the Manila Lions 41-23. And that's the Manila Lions' first defeat of the year. Right. North Little Rock starting the fourth quarter with possession. Led by Moses Moody with 22 points on the night. He had a 10 point, excuse me, he had a 12 point third quarter. A the, lot of those were from behind the arc, weren't they? They were indeed. I believe he's got one, two, three, four three pointers on the night. Thrower is thinking about that deep three pointer now for North Little Rock. And he'll work back towards center circle guarded by Ragsdale. Over to Otis Jordan, now at the top of the key for Moody. Move. Moody, unbelievable. Give him five three-pointers on the night, 25 points in the ball game. He's five for seven from the three-point line. That's 71%, Andy. Well, again, when it, you can tell when it leaves his hands that it's going in. It just looks so beautiful. 
And any coach is going to be happy as you're shooting 71% from behind the three-point line as Grant Allen misses his three. And then we got a foul. Looks, And that's going to be on Jack Ragsdale, and that's going to be his fifth. Uh, Ragsdale went over immediately to help him up as well because he was trying to bump him off the spot. He does pick up his fifth. He'll head to the bench, so. Ezel, Perry, Garrett, Allen, and Weiser out on the floor. And now to shoot a one and one will be Otis Jordan. His first trip to the free throw line. He does have three points in the ball game. Dropped in a triple back in the second quarter. Got the front end of it, four points for him. And things hold true. The Charging Wildcats will take on the host Jonesboro Hurricane at 4.30 tomorrow mm. in the championship of the 33rd annual Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. Now, won't that be fun to watch? Always North Little Rock and Jonesboro is a tough battle between these two squads. Perry pulling up from about six feet out now finds himself in double-digit scoring on the evening. Moody drives around Weiser, puts up a shot over Ezel, and Moody. That was a rainbow shot over Ezel, because Ezel actually timed that one pretty good. Well, if you don't shoot it as high as the ceiling in here, you're not getting it over Ezel, and he had to, had to put it up over him that time, and now Tyler Perry will head to the free throw line, shoot an and one opportunity. He's now got 12 points in the ball game, looking for his 13th. And that's the first foul on Moses Moody. And we're five points away from a running clock. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, five points away. Jordan with a nice feed off down low to Kylon McCullough, and now we're just two points away. Three points away, excuse me. Bad math. Where'd you go, school? DeWitt. Grant Allen <laughs> drives, shots off the mark. Here's Otis Jordan weaving through traffic. Corner pocket three-pointer, and are you freaking kidding me, Moses Moody? 30 points on the night. And now we've got a running clock. Six three-pointers for Moses Moody here in tonight's ball game. Harbor just can't contain him. And there's a three-point answer from Tyler Perry. 15 points now. Here's Watkins trying to find McCullough, and McCullough will lose it out of bounds. Yep, and there's the clock continuing. And we got a fresh new squad coming in here for Springdale Harbor. Ezel is checking into the game. Hunter Wright is checking into the game. Zach Peck. And then uh, still got Tyler Garrett and Grant Allen out on the floor for Coach Bowling. I'm surprised Coach Rice hasn't put any subs in, and that's going to be off of off of uh, Garrett's foot. He just dribbled it right off his own foot. And looked at the referee like, you know that was him, right? <laughs> the referee said, no, sir, didn't, didn't see it that way. 4.45 and counting left to play here in this one. Again, North Little Rock going to move on. Here's another three-pointer by Moody. I think that might have been, what, the third one he's missed all yep. night? North Little Rock to play Jonesboro tomorrow in the championship round of this Barry Pruitt tournament. And Harbor gets fine bluff. Oh, that was to, that was supposed to be a pass. Yeah, a little bit too high. It was into Ezel, which you got to get it in high. But there's McCullough with a ball fake. I'll work it back around the perimeter. And again, I'm surprised nobody's coming off the bench for North Little Rock charging Wildcats. Three point shot off the mark. And here's North Little Rock with it again. We got a timeout by North Little Rock. It's going to be a full timeout. I guess he's going to get his subs in. So 3.54 left to play here in the ball game, and it is a full timeout. We'll go ahead and step aside, take one with them. Seven, excuse me, 71 to 44 is your score with 3.54 left to play in the ball game. We're back with more fourth quarter action right after this on Tube Town. Come out and see the largest lighting display in the Mid-South at Lights of the Delta. 
Over 6 million lights and 48 major motion displays span a 40-acre drive through site. Lights of the Delta is open Sunday through Thursday from 5.30 until 9 p.m. and 5.30 until 10 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays through December 27th. For more information, visit our website, lightsofthedelta.com. Don't miss Lights of the Delta through December 27th. Back here in Jonesboro at John Riggs Hurricane Jim for the Barry Pruitt Classic. We're here in our fourth and final game of the night. Thanks so much for being a part of us here with us on this Friday evening. 71 to 44 is your score. North Little Rock leading Harbor in turbo clock time. And a good game for the charging Wildcats. Ezell with a block. Ragsdale coming up with it. Nope, beg your pardon. That's uh, Jibron Duggar into the game. Feeds it up to Hunter Wright. Wright, bounce pass to Allen. Allen with a deep three-point attempt. Off the mark, Ezell fighting for that rebound. Hunter Wright comes down with it. Duggar to Peck. Peck with another beautiful jump shot. Off the mark this time. Hunter Wright coming down with a rebound, though. Grant Allen working from that left elbow is going to drive. Split the defense and did a good job. Laying that one off the glass. Grant Allen with his first two points of the game. Three-point shot from Spencer Sims. 32 is Mason Shaw. He checked in for the charging Wildcats. And the foul is going to go against Caleb Agge. Agge Actually, it was a... Uh, Officials timeout. Ah. And there's also a 44 into the game. Leaner shot blocked by Sims. Allen comes up with it. Somehow got that over Sims, and Allen now with four points here in the fourth quarter. 2.20 and counting left to play in this one. Three-point shot on North Little Rock's end of the floor. No good. Allen comes up with a rebound and a foul called on number 44. Under two minutes left to play now with our turbo clock. <clears throat> Again, Moses Moody, Moody finishing the ball game with 30 points. Dropped in, I believe I counted six three-pointers. Six three-pointers on the night for Moses Moody. Green Allen hit the first one. And the second. Second one will also fall. Six points here in the quarter for him. Dish off down low. Nice feed. Right into, I believe that was Makai Washington. Yes. Three points now in the game for him. Here's Allen, baseline, kicks it out for Duggar. Duggar for three. Duggar. Why not get your name in the scorebooks here in the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic? Under a minute now. Sims with it. Top of the key, deep three-point shot. Can't answer. Nothing. Offensive rebound. That shot no good. Here's Connor Sykes with it. Feeds it ahead to Ezell. Ezell tried to dunk it home. Just to try to let out a little frustration there. <laughs> Anthony Davis. I hit his head on the backboard. I think he hit his head on the backboard. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Can we can we get another look at that, guys? I really want to see if he hit his head on the backboard. <laughs> So here's the feed ahead to Ezell as he shoots his second. He, he sure did. did. He, he hit did. his head on the corner. Now that's the end of the ball game as Ezell can't hit either of the free throws. And that's not the way you want to end the fourth quarter with a hitting your face uh, on the corner of the backboard. But nonetheless, 
Harbor drops this one to North Little Rock, 76 to 53. The final, without a doubt, Moses Moody, player of the game, 30 points in the ball game for him. Leading scorer tonight for the Springdale Harbor Wildcats, 16 points for Tyler Garrett. Tyler Perry was able to chip in 15, but just not enough horses to catch up with the North Little Rock charging Wildcats, Wes. And we in exactly, Andy. And if you look at the uh, what we're going to see tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, excuse me, tomorrow afternoon at noon, it's going to be the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, at noon tomorrow. I'm getting my brackets pulled up here. It's going to be Jacksonville Lighthouse taking on uh, West Side. And then South Side will take on Weibel. And then in the consolation game, it'll be Harbor taking on Pine Bluff. And our championship game will be Jonesboro and North Little Rock. And again, all of that starting tomorrow right here on Tube Town. And of course, the Tube Town Facebook page. Make sure you like and follow that Facebook page if you haven't done so already, because you're going to want to see all of this action that we're going to be bringing you tomorrow. Again, four games starting at noon here on Tube Town. And we'll go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. Again, the final score of this North Little Rock Springdale Harbor game, 76 to 53. Big thanks to all of our camera operators this evening. Richard and Nathan, of course, everybody down in our control room as well. Uh, Ryan, Tyler, Brandon, Marcus, all of you guys. Appreciate you guys making tonight happen. For my partner, Wes Sisko, I'm Andy Manus signing off for the evening, saying so long. We'll see you back here tomorrow at Don Riggs Hurricane Gym and Barry Pruitt Court for the final round of the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. Again, four games starting tomorrow at noon right here on Tube Town. We'll see you then. Have a great night, everyone.